Hi YouTube, in this video we're going to prove two hyperbolic identities. And the way we're going to do the proofs is a way that will allow you to remember these hyperbolic identities. Um, these aren't, aren't used very often, so it's very easy to forget them. So let's go ahead and go through the proof. I'll call this 1, and we'll call this 2. So let's prove 1, so proof of 1. So to prove 1, we'll start by writing down another familiar identity. So recall that the hyperbolic cosine squared minus the hyperbolic sine squared is equal to 1. So now we're going to come up with this first one here. So here you see the hyperbolic tangent. So recall that hyperbolic tangent is hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cosine. So here you have a hyperbolic sine. So what we'll do is we'll divide everything by the hyperbolic cosine squared. That will give us the hyperbolic tangent squared. Let's divide everything by this. This gives you 1 minus hyperbolic tangent squared. And then 1 over the hyperbolic cosine squared is the hyperbolic secant squared. We're almost there. If we want to make it match the form that we have up here, all we have to do is add the hyperbolic tangent squared to both sides. So if you do that, plus hyperbolic tangent squared, plus hyperbolic tangent squared, so you get the hyperbolic tangent squared of x plus the hyperbolic secant squared of x is equal to 1. And that completes the proof. You probably could have done a more elegant proof, but the reason I did it this way is to show you how to come up with these in a way that you'll never forget. So if you're ever doing a problem and you have to come up with this first identity, you have a hyperbolic tangent squared or a hyperbolic secant squared, you start by writing down this one. And you ask yourself, hey, how do I get hyperbolic tangent squared? Well, here you have a cinch squared, so you divide by quotient squared, and that creates the hyperbolic tangent. All right, let's go ahead and prove 2. And we're going to do it the same way, because I think it's more instructive to do it this way, so that you can remember these formulas, or at least come up with them, rather, if you forget them. So again, we'll start by writing down what we know. We know that the hyperbolic cosine squared of x minus the hyperbolic sine squared of x is equal to 1. So again, let's say in a situation where you have to recall this identity and you just don't remember it. Well, okay, here we have hyperbolic cotangent squared. So to get the hyperbolic cotangent, we have to divide by the hyperbolic sine in this case, right? Because hyperbolic cosine squared over hyperbolic sine squared will give us the hyperbolic cotangent squared. You just keep saying hyperbolic, it's hard. Cosine over sine is cotangent, but it's hyperbolic, right? So and then divide by the hyperbolic sine squared, and then divide by the hyperbolic sine squared. So this is going to be the hyperbolic cotangent squared minus 1 equals, then 1 over the hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cosecant, except this time it's squared. Very similar to what we did before, um, except this time uh, I'm going to add the 1. So we have hyperbolic cotangent squared of x equals um, 1 plus hyperbolic cosecant squared of x. And to finish, we would just subtract the hyperbolic cosecant squared. So we get hyperbolic cotangent squared of x minus hyperbolic cosecant squared of x, and that's equal to 1. And that completes the proof. So again, these weren't the most elegant proofs, but again, the point is, if you're ever in a situation where you have to come up with these identities, just always recall that the hyperbolic cosine squared of x minus the hyperbolic sine squared of x is equal to 1. And then from this one, you can come up with the other ones. I hope this video uh, has been helpful. That's it.